Hey everybody, this is Nicholas Rogers with the Big Timber Lodge. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're a new viewer, please stick around to the end of the video where I will ask you then to sub, leave a comment, leave a like, only if you feel I deserve it. So, in this video today, we're going to cover how do you adjust the buttstock on an AR-15 so it fits your shoulder and your length of pull properly, as well as how do you mount the scope on top of the rifle so you're getting optimal eye relief. So come check out the new AR I just got. So this is my new AR-15. It's a blackout defense quantum dual taper lock 13.9 inch barrel fitted with a collapsible Magpul stock, Magpul grip, as well as an M-lock handguard. And on the end of the barrel, we find a hybrid chemo flash hider slash muzzle brake adapter that takes dead air silencers. One of the awesome things about this Blackout Defense 13.9 inch barrel is the fact that they actually pin and welded this compensator attachment onto the end of the barrel. And even though it's 13.9, with this chemo adapter, it makes the barrel now 16 inches, so you don't have to register this as a short barrel rifle. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what do I do with this collapsible buttstock? How do I adjust it so that I know that it's fitting me correctly? And then where am I gonna mount the scope on top of this Picatinny rail? Okay, so to figure everything out, there's a couple of things that we need to understand when we're setting up a rifle and how to make it not only comfortable, but fit you ergonomically. So the first thing that we're going to go back to is called length of pull. Length of pull is an old measurement for hunting rifles, but it's also useful in modern sporting weapons on how far your shoulder should be from the flat part of the trigger. Now, in order to measure this, I'm gonna put a little old chart up on this video and you'll see it right there. I also have it printed out right here. And essentially it tells you that from your armpit to the tips of your fingers should dictate how far your length of pull should be. So for example, if I have a 26 inch length from my armpit to the tip of my fingers, I should have roughly a 12 and a quarter uh, to 12 and a half inch length of pull from the buttstock to the tip of the actual trigger. Now, how can we measure this? All you really need is a tape measure. Well, you need a tape measure, but you also need a long flat surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tape measure and I'm going to hook it onto the end of the table and just pull it out lengthwise until I get about, you know, three feet out, which is 36 inches. I definitely don't have that length of pull uh, or that distance in my hand. So if I can get the tape measure to lay flat, all I have to do then now is come up, put my armpit on the end of the table, and then put my finger out forwards. Once I'm there, just stand up and I can see I am at roughly 26 and a half inches. All right, so I hit 26 and a half inches. So looking at our chart, I'll put it back up on the screen, we can see that with a 26 inch armpit to fingertip, I need roughly 12 and a quarter to 12 and a half inches. So I'll go with 12 and a half just because I'm a little over 26 inches. So what does that mean with our rifle? Well, we have these collapsible butt stocks right here and almost every AR-15 will have an adjustable stock on it. What you have to do is just pull up on whatever lever it is and then pull it outward. Well, if I pull it all the way out, let's go ahead and get a measurement. That is roughly 14 inches. That's a 14 inch length of pull. Now, looking back at my chart, I need to be roughly at 12 and a half. So I need to come in probably a couple of clicks. So one, oh, that was two. One. Let's take a look now. I'm still at 13 and a quarter inch. Let's move it in one more. All right. And right there, I am at 12 inches and three quarters. 12 and three quarter inch. Now I have a feeling if I go in one more click, that's gonna be a little too short for me. Yeah, that's putting me right at 12. Make sure there wasn't anything that I missed. Nope, that's it. So it's either gonna be 12 or 12 and three quarters.
I think I'm going to go with the 12 and 3 quarters. Now, how does that feel ergonomically? So once I place the rifle into the crease of my shoulder and pull it up, does it feel like I have a good cheek weld? It does. It feels like I have a good cheek weld. Also, being a bearded man with these styles of butt stocks, you don't want to have to have your face on the seam from where the buffer tube is meeting the actual butt stock that slid on it because your hairs can get stuck inside of this seam. That feels good. That feels really good. Oh, and that trigger feels even better, man. Shout out to Blackout Defense for making one of the best triggers I've ever felt on an AR-15. It's called the Zero Reset Trigger. If you haven't checked out Blackout Defense, you need to. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the scope situation. So now let's take a look at where to mount your scope on top of your AR-15 rifle. There's a couple of deciding factors that will let you know where it needs to be, but the main important one is you don't want to interfere with this charging handle. What do I mean by that? All right, so if you've shot an AR-15 or you've seen other people shoot AR-15 style weapons, you know that once you put the magazine into the mag well, you have to pull the charging handle backwards in order to get around from that magazine into the chamber. So the last thing you wanna do is interfere with the mechanics of grabbing this charging handle to pull it backwards. And a lot of people, when they get their first AR-15s, will make this mistake and they will mount the scope too far back on the Picatinny rail, and typically this is done because the optic has poor eye relief. We'll get to that here shortly. But what this does is now the rear part of the scope, this rear bell, is now over my charging handle, making it kind of difficult to get to in order to pull this straight back. Now, if you're doing this and you're only shooting off a bench, it's not a big deal. But if you're trying to compete in, let's say, three gun or have a rifle that's ready for an engagement where you might have to change a mag or, heaven forbid, you get a malfunction and you have to drop magazine, wrap the charging handle, and inspect, you want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to interfere with the mechanics of that. So, in order to prevent this from happening, we are going to want to mount our rifle scope as far forward as needed in order to clear the charging handle portion of the rifle. That way when I reach up, especially if I have gloves on in a cold situation or a tactical situation, and it's going to add more bulk, I'm not going to be hitting this rifle scope. I could just reach up, grab the charging handle, pull it back, and there's not gonna be any contention. Another thing to talk about too is when you're mounting your rifle scope base, you want to ensure that you're not splitting over the receiver portion of the Picatinny rail as well as the handguard portion of the Picatinny rail because what this can do is when the scope base is on both and you're putting pressure on the handguard when you're shooting, it can create a fluctuation with where the base of the scope is and you're not going to get accurate shots. So you want to ensure that your scope base is mounted only on the receiver portion of the Picatinny rail. Now, if this is one of your first AR builds and you didn't spend a lot of money on your optic, you might be in a little bit of trouble here. What do I mean about that? Well, if I mount this, let's say, all the way as far forward as possible on my receiver Picatinny rail, you can see both cross bolts are on the receiver still, and this gives me the most clearance to reach up and grab my charging handle, what I've now done is I've pushed the rear bell of my scope further forward down the rifle, which is going to increase the gap between my eye and the back of this scope. So with cheaper optics, you typically will find that the eye relief isn't as great as more expensive optics, meaning that this, you need to have your face closer to the optic in order when you look through that scope to get a good eye box. Otherwise, you can start to get that tunnel vision where you get the black ring and what you're going to end up doing is finding that you're going to have to move yourself or crean your neck forward in order to actually get a full eye box when you look through that scope. So if this is one of your first builds or you purchased a scope that doesn't have good eye relief, you're going to have to weigh which one's more important to you. Do I want to have clearance in order to be able to grab this charging handle unrestricted or do I want to have the scope move further back so when I bring the rifle up to my shoulder, it's not like I'm having to crean my neck in order to get a good eye box. That is going to be up to you. My personal opinion is 
try to save up some money and get a good optic that works with your rifle, with your length of pull, that will allow you to comfortably be able to bring the rifle up and you'll get a good field of view looking through that eye box. You're not going to have any sort of tunnel vision as well as you are going to be unencumbered reaching up for this charging handle. Another thing to mention too is make sure you follow the manufacturer's spec for what the torque should be for the cross bolts and also the hex screws that go into the actual rings that mount the scope down onto the base. I personally use a Wheeler fat wrench and I follow the specs. On the bottom of my condition one scope base, it tells me that for these cross bolts, I want to tighten them down to 65 inch pounds. For the actual screws that hold the top of the rings down over the scopes, it's only, I believe, 20 inch pounds. So you do not want to over tighten these, nor do you want to under tighten them because then you can start to get shift. But one of the bad things that scope manufacturers will tell you is that if you don't use the proper specifications, you can actually start to crush your tube, which can actually cause malfunctions when making adjustments inside of your scope. So if you've ever actually been looking through a scope and you're trying to side it in and you've taken a shot and let's say it's like four inches off to the right, and you're like, okay, four times four if we're doing, let's say, MOA clicks uh, at 100 yards. So that's 16 clicks I need to take it over to the right you know, in order to make that adjustment, and then you go to shoot again and it barely moves it at all, chances are your rings are too tight on the tube or your rings actually need to be lapped, but that's for a separate conversation. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're new to my channel, if you thought this was good content, please leave a like, please leave a comment, and also hit the subscribe button so you can get more of my content here in the future. Until next time, peace!